Gary showed earlier uh, when he was talking about the polymorph engines. Um, basically, GF100 has the 512 CUDA cores, of which mentioned in the, uh, the, <coughs> the 16 polymorph engines, one associated per SM, four raster engines in this per GPC block, uh, 64 texture units, basically four texture units per SM, 48 ROP units, which are these little blue dots right here. Um, and uh, basically, the frame buffer is 384 bits GB Euro 5. So got more of everything. Uh, let's go on and look at the SM. So it's got the 32 CUDA cores each. That's 4x what we have in GD200. Um, shared memory on GD200 was uh, 16 kilobytes only. We've got this new configurable um, RAM that is part L1 cache, part um, hard shared memory. It can be configured as either 48K shared memory. 16K L1 or the reverse. So we've got the new L1 cache and it's part of that shared memory. Uh, we've improved the, the instruction set. Um, there's a lot more 32-bit integer operations. In fact, a lot of them go up to four times faster per core than, um, than our previous generation. Um, we have this FMA operation, which is IEEE 754 2008 compliant. Um, FMA stands for Fuse Multiply Add. It has more bits of precision the intermediate uh, from basically doing the multiply and add together than you actually have coming out. You don't do the round between the multiply and the add. Uh, four texture units per SM and then one of these polymorph engines. Next. Okay. So Henry mentioned about some uh, stuff about keeping um, data on chip. And the way we do that is we actually use the L1 and L2 caches to store intermediate data as it gets passed from unit to unit. So instead of having a lot of very large dedicated buffers, which as you increase your polygon rate, you need to actually increase a lot of buffering on the chip. We actually use the L1 and L2 caches to pass data between different units, as you can see in this diagram. The L1 cache is also used for a bunch of other things outside of the use of the computer. It's an extremely valuable resource for graphics. Um, oftentimes, the shaders use more registers than are, can be kept on a chip in a performant way. And by Using the L1 and L2 cache to spill registers to a stack, basically, you end up running more threads on the on the SM, having it operate faster. And the L1 and L2 cache most recently used and allow you to, um, to get good performance when you have to pull the data back in. Also, DX11 exposes a global load store in pixel shaders and uh, and compute shaders, so you can actually go out and read and write what's called unordered with unordered buffer. Yeah, unordered Here. access buffer. Yeah, unordered access buffer, which is basically just a region of memory that any shader can access anywhere. Um, then we have the L2 cache, which we talked about uh, in the compute uh, thing. It's a read-write cache. It's fully coherent. We go into the FB. Um, everything gets cached. Vertex data, because it gets <coughs> SM intermediate results, both read and write. Texture data is it's being read, and ROP data is read and write. Also, if multiple units are using the data, it gets cached. So if the ROP writes the data, Gets used by texture that can come out of the cache itself. So the way we have the Actually, just one thing I just want to impression on the, on the cache subject here is that the, the, the cache design was actually one of the other very big uh, efforts in, in, in GF100. And it was a very big deal to change this simple read only texture cache. We had the previous generation with this read write coherent um, design. And it's also quite a bit more expensive in area than the simple read only cache was. Um, one of the big motivations for that actually was this geometric realism. Uh, uh, objective that we had for graphics. You see these dotted lines here. Um, we actually have special modes so we can actually ensure that for that traffic, it actually is guaranteed to all stay on chip. There, there's this, you can imagine there's these big FIFOs of data going from, each, from one stage to the next stage, right? And the way a FIFO works is if you have enough storage on the chip to hold the FIFO, then everything's wonderful, right? But as soon as you have one byte too short, then boom, everything has to go off memory and come back in and you just, you just cost yourself a lot of power, a lot of bandwidth that you would have rather had left used for the texture and rock on the pixel side that we're already using it before. It's not like we had excess bandwidth flying around. So uh, one of the things this cache supports is it has this, has this special capabilities for the data being used for the, for the geometry stages where it can ensure that they're going to stay held on chip and, and not have to go off, off the die. And, and that's, that's really important for making sure that we're, we have the, the bandwidth to, to keep the units that we paid for there. So I guess a, one other facet of this that might not be completely obvious um, is that 
Man, basically keeping data and die is also a scheduling problem in the sense that we're running, you know, vertex threads, whole shader threads, you know, basically all of these different kinds of threads on die, and you have to, at any given moment, you have to decide which threads to actually execute. And you want to do that in a way that doesn't cause you to generate too much data that would push you out into memory. So you actually have to schedule things very carefully in order to guarantee that um, sort of this whole engine runs efficiently. So there are a bunch of different facets to managing to keep uh, things efficient, and scheduling is another one that's not completely obvious. But at any given moment, you've got you know conceivably tens of thousands of threads running, and they're all of different types, and you just have to decide which ones to let run at any given moment. So. All right. Any questions on the patches? All right. This is a, basically just a table of how how our caches have been. And uh, yeah, caches have changed in the GP200 GF100. Our L1 texture cache per quad is about the same size. We've done other things to make it more efficient. So we actually have better hit rates on the new cache versus the old one, but it's about the same size per quad. Um, the dedicated L1 load store cache, GT 200 didn't have anything like that. So all load stores had to go all the way out to memory and back. The GF100 has this 16 or 48 k byte mode. We can pick whichever one we want, and we're trading that off versus shared memory. So, for instance, for physics, we, we make the cache big, and we make the shared memory small. For other cases, we swap it around. Uh, then there's a shared memory, which GT200 has 16 kilobytes. GF100 has, once again, configurable either 16 or 48K. This allows um, threads to share more work between each other if you use a 48K mode. And in many cases, that actually poses a, a huge performance improvement. Uh, and then the L2 cache, we used to have a texture read-only cache of 256 kilobytes triple the size of it, and all clients could read and write it. One thing that I don't know that Emmett mentioned is that when he says we can choose between 16 and 48K, the we in that case is the programmer. The programmer can decide how they want to allocate the, the memory between cache and shared memory, um, since the programmer understands their code the best. Yeah. 